Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Ian. Hey, I'm your writer. Also joining us, very spoopy, is Jesse. Hello, I'm Lady Lameness, and happy Halloween, everybody. Yes. And also joining us is Rosemary. Hi, everyone. I'm k -Myth. And lastly, but not least, we have Ella. Hi, I'm Rosar. All right, and I am Chaos. Does anyone have some show and tell? Me, me, pick me. What do you have? Me. What do you have, Jess? So, oh, in honor of the holiday that I am not used to celebrating, um, I found this little pumpkin guy that is super cute because it like makes noise, it spins, and like there are skateboards and stuff. Well, that, not that oh, one. This is delightful. That one. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. And the great thing is that you can make it run even when the switch is set to off and it randomly turns itself on and off by That's, itself. Yeah, it's a it high is, quality piece it's of It's haunted. Yeah. It's haunted! <laughs> yeah, by design. It's, it's, it's totally purposeful. And I can make it run without music, so. Nice, nice. Some little... Wow, yeah, the music is really very cute. So, some of it cut out a bit, but that's fine. You you, you got the, the feel for this. Anyone else? What, what do you got? Yeah, I've got. So um, beginning of September, I went to Worldcon, which was okay. in Chicago this year, and I brought home accolades. <laughs> so I was actually staff at the convention. Um, I worked on the schedule. And for that, I got <laughs> this shiny hero of the con award. Scheduling's hard. Scheduling is very hard. Yeah. And I mean, the, the software we were using was built specifically for this. We were beta testing it and setting up the schedule at oh, the same time. Oh, what could go wrong? Actually, <laughs> it, it went really well. Um, I really love this software. I cannot wait until it's open source because then everybody should use it because it, it makes the larger, and more complicated your program, the better this is. Um, I Cute. also competed in the masquerade Ooh. um with my steampunky brewster costume uh because i am the trash i like to see in the world <laughs> <laughs> and i uh, got this lovely best in journeyman class performance plaque oh, nice uh, this Excellent. is a 3d printed plaque this is like, way better than a ribbon yeah. And like nice. if I if I close my eyes and squint my brain, I can I can pretend like this is a real Hugo. I mean, it's not <laughs> but excellent. It, it, it's it's the stepping Hugo stone rock. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's next. Also, up. we should put a picture of Rosemary's um, outfit. Yeah, um, if Rosemary costume. gives me a picture. Um, and yeah, I remember yeah, to put I it will, in. Then, I will yeah, get that sure. to you. I've got I've got because it looked good awesome. Action. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm thought from the stage <laughs> it was it was fun it was a very silly sketch that i put together excellent and... so today we are doing our last rhythm of war topic for 2022 because mid-november there's uh, a new cosmere book and so we're going to be talking about that for a bit uh and then mm. then in 2023 there's going to be more cosmere books so we're going to be Talking about that. There will be more what? Rhythm of War topics in 2023. I do have some open slots for the entire year. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. It'll be fine. All two of them. <laughs> no, 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 no. There, there's more than that. There's more than that. I, I, I got it all planned until Brandon ruins it all again. But yeah. uh, for, for it, listeners it, and viewers who aren't aware, like Eric has like legitimately had all of 2023 recording schedule planned out since before the secret project came out and then he had to scrap that and redo the entire thing well for 2022 yeah. yeah 2022 like yeah. i don't yeah. know which year is it yeah yeah. Um, yeah time is an illusion yeah yeah mm -hmm. but like eric actually plans all of this out in advance so he's not kidding when he's like i only have a couple of spots like literally he only has a couple of best we, spots you gotta open. know what episodes to prioritize and when because uh and I, I, I have definitely gotten onto the kick this year when we have span reads and Diceborn and lost previews and all this stuff happening. Like there's so much stuff that uh, I got to plan out when things are because there, there's a lot happening. And so I'm liking the Google Calendar. I even had an entire Google Sheet that uh, 
I, I made a copy of my 2020 schedule before Brandon ruined it all. And that was what I called that sheet. And that was before the secret projects. So we were actually going to record this Adolin and Maya episode uh, a while ago, but we didn't. Uh, so uh, now it's here. Uh, so before this year, um, this might also we might also uh, two weeks from now, there will probably not be a podcast. Uh, that's the weekend before Lost Metal and, and Dragon Steel Con. Uh, if somehow we get the white sand omnibus in time, I might try and fit it in, but I don't, don't. No, not worth it. Not Not worth it. (laughs) Yeah. I love how hopeful you've been about this, Eric. Like you just held on for so long that we're going to get it. And like, I I can hear it in your voice now that you're not so certain, but there's still like some hope there. You're like, maybe you'll get it. Whereas everyone else has just become a cynic about it. I mean, honestly, (laughs) I, it, it purely for my own editing, I don't want it to come out because I don't want to have to post a podcast that uh, weekend of the uh, of the Dragon Steel Con like that. That's way too tedious. So uh, after this, you will not have a shard cast until Lost Metal comes out. But there will be plenty of Lost Metal content. I can promise you that reactions, topics, multiple reactions, episodes and things. So. It's going to be more good. reactions than ever before. Yes. <laughs> yes. A lot of it's like our cast keeps growing. <laughs> our cast keeps growing. Yeah. So let's talk about Adolin. So we I don't think we've ever done a dedicated Adolin episode. So we're going to talk about Adolin. We're going to talk about his best guest friend, Maya. Um, and so we thought we'd start with talking about well, what what do you guys think about Adolin? I enjoy his golden retriever himbo puppy <laughs> energy. It, it's it really, I mean, he's just he he's just so clueless about certain things. And I know we talk a lot about how Renarin is on the autism spectrum, but I catch a few hints of it from Adolin as well. Just really? in how comp- like his his complete literal cluelessness like the girl who he gave a sword to because he thought that's what she wanted i mean he's not there there's i guess it's a spectrum on of autism and like one friend of mine used to say is like if you met one person with autism you've met one person with autism so i i catch little glimpses of while he's on a different edge of the spectrum than Renarin mm. is. I would not be surprised if he's got a few of those autistic traits as well. I, I definitely interpreted that scene with the sword of just like he's he was a young idiot and didn't know how to flirt with people, uh, which like, <laughs> yeah, I, I can empathize with that. That seems very believable. <laughs> but it, it's just it's his utter confusion as to how mad she was. He's like, but that's what she said she wanted. I don't understand. <laughs> and I think him taking pe- what people say at face value is a very mm. autistic trait. I think this is a good example of Brandon writing something uh, in one. How far into the episode do we have to get before Jesse throws that thing across the room? <laughs> Um, I think this is a good example of um, when Brandon's just trying to kind of like write a funny moment or like a specific moment without any meaning to it and does not realize the meanings that can be taken from it. And like Mm. we've had that a lot with uh, uh, Brandon accidentally writing uh, gay character Sanderson. But I think this is another example of that where he's like, I'm just going to write something funny. And you can totally see it in the way Rosemary is saying like that makes a lot of sense. And I can definitely see why people either on the spectrum or who are like more um, not involved, like uh, know more about it could definitely just immediately take that away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and remember that both autism and ADHD combined together run in families, you know. I, I've got ADHD. My brother does too, and he, one of his sons is both ADHD and autistic. So, you know these these traits run in families. I've been trying to think about my thoughts for Adolin. Okay, because 
I don't remember what my initial thoughts about him were because uh-huh. it's been a while since I read Way of Kings for the first time. I I like Ida Island. Like he's just a fun character. He but he currently is our non radiant among radiants, which provides an interesting perspective on everything. Whether or not that will continue to be the case, we don't know, and we'll get to that later on. Yep. In particular, I enjoy his relationship with Maya. And I have sense uh, words of radiance. It's like I can remember in the gap between words of radiance and Oathbringer, like I started I had a theory about Adolin resurrecting his sword, which we got a tiny bit of in Oathbringer. And I'm like, this is a plot line I like, and it's a plot line Brandon is taking, and I support that. Yep. Stormlight is a series where I went from not caring about most of the characters to over time, Brandon has won me over with almost every character that you're meant to like, basically. And like this happened with Adeline as well. I, I didn't care about him when I read Wave Kings. I was like, okay, he's a character that exists. But like there was nothing about him that really drew me to him as a character. It wasn't until getting into like Words of Radiance and this p- particularly Oathbringer that I was like, okay, no, I've fallen in love with this character. And like that continued on with Rhythm of War. I think we just get so much more of Adeline's personality and also just his own struggles after book one, whereas book one really just kind of came across to me as like, okay, he's the perfect son of the general and like Mm -hmm. is just trying to do his best. And like, that was about it. And I wasn't super interested in that. It didn't help that I didn't like Dalinar's storyline that much overall. Um, But definitely moving onwards, I'm like, wow, Mm -hmm. Adeline is a precious cinnamon roll who like, Everyone who is his friend just has such a better life because of how he is friends with people and how he takes care of people and how he notices things with other people as well. So I really, really like Adeline now. I think he's a great character and I'm really excited to see more from him, even though initially I just didn't care about his character at all. And I, I think that's a really great thing to point out is like you liked him a lot more afterwards of Radiance, not Words of Radiance, after Way of Kings. And that makes a lot of sense because for Way of Kings, he is just there as the foil to Dalinar's plot line. Yeah. And- Whereas Words of Radiance, he really becomes a character for him in his, yeah. in his own right. Yeah. 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 I don't actually think it's until Oathbringer that we've start fully seeing him as like a character getting his own story. Mm-hmm. Like I think way of uh, words of radiance, definitely he's a character in his own right then, which I'm so glad we got more of, but I think Oathbringer, we start getting Adeline not being just a supporting character in other people's stories. He's now getting his own story. And like, that's very exciting considering where it goes in rhythm of war. Mm-hmm. So I will say I'm one of the people who liked him from the first book for kind of the similar reasons that you disliked him <laughs> because he is basically the, the Prince Charming archetype for the story, right? Like the rich, wealthy kid who is kind and nice to everyone and a best warrior, son of the great warrior, etc., etc. And you don't really get the like this archetype like played straight very often and he was he was basically prince charming being played straight and i kind of like that and then when the next books have like developed him as a character he has consistently been my top three favorite characters in the series i would say i i can't really remember my initial way of king's thoughts uh but definitely like mm-hmm. words of radiance and on i'm like i really like adolin and like adolin's gotten 
more and more screen time as things went on. Like, uh, it was so great to see his expanded role in Words of Radiance. And uh, I really like what Brandon did in Oathbringer with Adolin, because uh, in that book, right, Adolin is struggling with uh, the Ratio Fear stuff in part one, right? But we're not mm-hmm. getting points of view because we're seeing uh, Adolin from Shallan's perspective, which is interesting. Uh, we'll talk about Sadius. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> we, we will definitely do that. Uh, but like we don't get Adolin POVs until they get into Shadesmar, where he's like, wow, I'm I thought I was hot stuff. But uh, wow, things are I am really out of my element. And I, f- I found that very interesting because he like he is obviously a very powerful person. But now everyone else is getting much more power and things and things are getting so crazy and weird. And I'm like, I, I dig this. And I really digged uh, Adolin going off on his own adventure uh, in Rhythm of War. But uh, I, I always liked him. I know there's there's much discussion. Like, I think evil Adolin is always uh, a thing that pops up in uh, fandom circles, like after the Sadius dying thing. And I, I can see if someone's disappointed that it didn't go down this way. But our cast does need someone who's not a total mental wreck. So that that's an important role to have. Uh, and I, I like that. <laughs> uh, really interesting seeing Alan versus the rest of the cast who do have like their share of problems and not that Adeline can't have his own problems but the way he deals with things is just really interesting to see compared to like like Kaladin like I relate a lot to Kaladin because of his depression because like I don't deal with things very well because of that whereas like seeing Adeline go through shades where I'd be like, oh, wow, the world has changed. Like, I've gone from kind of the top of the tower to being at the bottom of the stack. And he just, like, picks himself up, sees a friend in need. It's like, I'm going to help him, and then I'm going to go on, and I'm going to do the best I can. And that's it, it was just really nice seeing what it could be like, I guess. Right. Um, it, it Like, if someone isn't having to deal with like hard mental health issues in general, um, like the, the rest of the cast is like, yeah. Play, play the shard cast drinking game. Every time that pumpkin lights on, <laughs> no, <laughs> and you'll get hammered get in this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should you put it die. on like, next time we do after dark and like, actually like every time it goes off, it's like, okay, take a drink. And then the, the podcast <laughs> will, will be over in 20 die. minutes. Cause we're all dead. <laughs> I, I'm debating whether I want to put a counter on screen during the a main it. episode or it, uh, that'd be a patron exclusive. I think I might just put a counter uh, on screen during the episode. So if you're wondering what that was earlier, that's the, yeah. So there you go. Lots of it, except with like how often this is going off, it'll be like a 10 minute short or something with all the. Yeah, clip, perfect. All the reactions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You could do a counter and then just like skip the middle bits and go from like one to ten, a hundred. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Perfect. Two. And like Adolin's conflict is mostly about like his relationship with Dalinar, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's like his main thing, uh struggling like how my my own person, I'm not my father. Uh, I'm totally cool with killing Sadius. And it's like, that was a good call. What, what are you going to do about it? Like you, you probably wouldn't think that's the honorable call, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. And then seeing him struggle a bit with uh, the fact that Dalinar killed, you know, mm-hmm. his mom. <laughs> uh, uh, but like th- that does affect him. But the plot sort of moves on from that in Rhythm of War, right? Yeah, it's like it, it's definitely there. But the plot, he's he's not at the plot where he's not at the point where the plot will allow him to deal with that. Yeah, but it is part of this interesting kind of like recurring leitmotif in Rhythm of War of people having issues with their parents. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's that's true. Because it's like Kaladin has it. um, Syl has it. um, That's true. 
Venley <laughs> and Esh and I have it to a certain extent. And then uh, then Adolin has it. I'm sure Shalon will have it next book. Yeah, Shalon read <laughs> next book. But but for but for Rhythm of War, she's she already got those taken care of. No trauma <laughs> involved. She didn't need to deal with that at all. No problems. <laughs> I like that interplay with uh, Dalinar. Uh, I'm interested to see like what happens to Dalinar in book five, uh, because like a lot of the main cast is sort of uh, stepping like back somehow. Uh, I assume some people are going to die uh, in some respects, maybe Dalinar. Uh, and so it would be interesting to see Adolin struggle it, not needing to live up to his dad like what what person is he like gonna be 15 years from now right like i'm very interested to see that so honestly i think adolin is the one character i'm certain will not die in book five 100 percent i would like to see that but i would like to see that resolve where alan decides he's his own person this is the way he wants to go whatever it is without dalinar dying first like i don't want dalinar dying to be the well my dad's gone so i don't have to live up to his expectations anymore because that's just kind of a boring ending i think like he's gone through all of this emotional conflict for it to he's not resolving it himself it's it's something external taking away that choice of resolving it so like i i would really like to see how that ends and like i i really hope he gets to the point where he can accept that he he is his father's son but that doesn't mean that he is his father and he can do what he wants without that like external like well my dad's gone so I don't have to be him anymore. I don't have to live up to his expectations because he's not there anymore. Basically, we don't need to fridge Dalinar for Adeline's character development. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's true, but I can imagine a situation where, like, if something happens to Dalinar and, like, Adolin, uh like, never resolves or deals with the fact that Dalinar killed his mom, right? Like that that could be a very interesting mm. uh type thing, right? Where he like I think constantly of these starts. things could happen. Yeah. yeah. Alternative. Adolin like does resolve something and Dalinar dies, but he doesn't actually die. They just think he dies and he actually becomes a fuse. <laughs> and then true. Back true. Five, they meet up again and it's like a whole different oh, thing. Yes. What's up? New <laughs> drama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all of these is possible. I, to be I, I honest, like personally, that. I would like to see Adolin resolve his differences with Dalinar, like actually with Dalinar, and not like his yeah. body. Because I, I was kind of underwhelmed by how the Adolin Dalinar plotline was handled in Rhythm of War. Sure. So I'd like to see some more elaboration on it. But I don't know if we'll have time for that in the plot. It's true. There's a lot to do in the book. Yeah. yeah. And so that's one of those plot lines that might end up getting pushed even further to the background. It's like it was pushed pretty far in the background in Rhythm of War. Like yeah. we didn't even get the moment. They just, I guess, Adorin and Renarin just read about it in Dalinar's <laughs> book. Apparently. Bad call, yeah. Dalinar. Like that's not a great call, all things considered. Awkward. You're gonna write a, a memoir story. about your life that your children are going to be upset about. Maybe tell them first! Or read it to them personally and, like, like not I after the tell them first. Because what, what you've them. written in the book is like, well, I wrote this before even thinking of telling you, which is in itself kind of screwed up. Alinar Colin, 60 years old and still a horrible dad. <laughs> um, yeah. Better than Liren, but. Well, I feel like that's a spicy debate that, okay, like, maybe, maybe we should have a. <laughs> yeah. We should have a shutdown about that. It's like. <laughs> worst dad of the cows. We're, we're saying, we're saying <laughs> that, like, the which dad is worse, like Liren or, or Dalinar? Dad and, of like, the Cosmere tier list. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Where um, does Rashek uh, rank? <laughs> Where does Straff rank in, in oh, between man. these people? Mm. I mean, Straff is definitively the worst, I think. Ooh. Okay, let's table oh, the not, bad not, father. Not necessarily the worst dad. He's just the worst. Yeah. 
<laughs> Let's table that. We'll save that for something fun. Uh, we'll sometime. Fill the spot for next year. Yeah. Uh, or, or a stream or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll find it out. has to be the Father's Day episode. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. That's, that, yeah, that's, that's pretty funny. Yeah. What you were saying about uh, the conflict between Dalinar and um, Adelin, like not being sure, I'm fully on board with you there. I feel like there's like two different parts to it. There's like Adeline's emotional conflict where he has to work through that side himself. But then there's like the actual external him talking to his father and how that is actually happening. And I, I agree that I'm disappointed how much of that we got, because I think that would be really interesting without going into specifics. If anyone's watched House of Dragons, uh, the, the, the parent-child relationship dynamics in there, I think that's a really good portrayal of something like this. And I would love to see something a little bit more in depth there so that we can actually see that conflict. Because even if it was something like Adeline goes to Shadesmar, Dalinar sends him to Shadesmar. What if Dalinar had sent him to Shadesmar as either a punishment for what happened with Sedeus? Or as a, I am not a good person in terms of like talking to people I care about. So I'm just going to send you away instead of resolving my conflicts. Like, I feel like there was more that could have been done with what we got. And there could be even more done after that as well. But yeah, I'm totally there with you. It'd be nice to see more actual interactions between Dalinar and Adeline to fix this, which don't know how it's going to happen in the next book with what has been set up. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot that needs to happen. Apparently it's going to be the Maybe biggest storm in 10 book. days. Maybe. Maybe. Well, we'll see. I, I feel like after book five, we'll definitely get to look at like the entire character arcs and see, OK, mm -hmm. which turned out OK and which did Brandon like not really do oh, that great, yeah. potentially. And th this might be one of them. Also. Uh, put your comments below on how you pronounce Adolin or uh, Adolin. Uh, we are not going. People have strong opinions on pronunciation of this. And whoever is crying in the comments gives us strength. Please comment below. It boosts engagement. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> Adolin is named after Aiden Alcium, So obviously it's a long A. But I oh, also so pronounce that as Adenalcium. Adenalcium, then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that really, what it comes down to is that the 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 long A at the front of something just grates on my nerves, and it's hard for me. Like I can barely make myself say Ati, and I would rather call him Ati. And wait, it's, isn't he Ati? I don't know. I think it's but we say Atium. Oh, I guess I say Ati. I call him Ati. It's <laughs> it's just I can't. Be you know, even though I I've started in on the graphic audio and they all pronounce Adeline with the heart, the long A, and it, it I just can't make my brain do it. Yeah. Even though I know that's probably technically more correct in the fandom, it it's 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 like this weird sound texture aversion that I have and. Yeah. Jess and I argue about this <laughs> frequently. <laughs> One of the most long standing debates in our relationship is how to pronounce the name of this character, and it has literally been going on since like day one of us talking. <laughs> So yeah, we're 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 not using the audiobook pronunciation. We're we're gonna pronounce because we, we have strong opinions and uh I, I will never be able to persuade Jess ever in the the universe will end before Jess changes this, so so I used to feel really self-conscious about like, I, I didn't know how these names were pronounced right. because I was like, I didn't know anyone in real life who read these books and I read them physically. So I had to like figure out a pronunciation for everything myself. And I used to feel really, really self-conscious about it. Like, is this right? Is this wrong? I don't know. Um, Cause kind of every other book series I've read, like there has kind of been a correct way to pronounce things. And then I started watching Shardcast and <laughs> like, I was like, oh, that's how people are saying things. But then, um, then like Ben, Jesus, this is your shout. <laughs> ben came on and Ben said Marisai. And I was like, oh, 
other people say that too? Okay, I'm going to say it however the hell I want that. And then like pronunciation cast happened. Yeah. And yeah, so, so pronounce it however you like. And, and to be fair, Brandon, Brandon agrees that you should pronounce yeah. it however you like. That there is no specific canon pronunciation. So don't you worry well, about it. Like, I, I believe what he says is that like, you are the director of the books in your own head and you can pronounce things however you want. Yeah. But there are legitimately correct ways of saying it in world. You are just not bound by them. Sure. I mean, yeah, Ooh. we're not going to say Kelsier here. Like, come on. Anyway. I can't wait for like movies and TV shows to come out and like they stick yeah. with something. And then like anyone who doesn't say it that way either doubles down. It's like, no, I will say it however the hell I want. Or is it's like indoctrinated into like saying it. Yeah. In whatever way, like the movie or TV show puts it, yeah. I, f- I feel like that's what's going to happen, and I feel like I'm going to hate it. Yeah, like I, I, that that 100 does happen, and sometimes it like changes how the author says it. Yeah, um, Funny. the Shannara series. I don't know if anybody else has read, but Terry Brooks used to say Shannara. And then what? when they started making the TV show, like, what? yeah, that's that's how, it was Shannara. Whoa. And then it's like when like the TV show, he's like, he's like, yeah, we're we're just going to call it Shannara because that's what most people say. And then like, yeah, <laughs> oof, that was a legitimate thing that happened. Don't worry. No one's going to wow. get me to pronounce things differently. Uh, I, I will be stubborn till the end of time. Your angry <laughs> comments will do nothing to me. Nothing. <laughs> and, and I will say that the, 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 the phonemes that cause the grating in my brain are mostly on like the internal end. It doesn't really bother me when I hear other people say it, but I can't wrap my brain around the, those syllables coming out of my mouth. It makes zero sense. Please don't try to analyze it. It's you're never going to make sense out of it because I can't even make sense out of it. Your curse of the night watcher. You can't do a, the the long hay. You just cannot do it. You just I mean, impossible. It's be, you know, like I can still say ATM. That doesn't bother me. I don't know why ATM is different. Maybe because it's not a name. I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Like it sounds a bit like eight, maybe. <clears throat> Eight. Well, you, I was gonna say you do eat them, but that's not correct grammar. But it is still a funny joke. <laughs> this whole discussion has really convinced me that my native language is superior to English because we do not have double pronunciations for every vowel. <laughs> that's most languages. Yeah. English, English is a great language. I'm so glad it's spread everywhere. English, what could go wrong? English is English is not a language. It is three languages stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. Mm-hmm. Not even like stacked well, they're like smushed together and like awkwardly, like an arm's awkwardly sticking out here. And then you've got like mm-hmm. a leg going <laughs> upwards like this. And I like that word. It, I think I shall take built. it. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I, I like the metaphor of like English just mugs other languages in dark alleys for grammar and yeah. words. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Rifles through their pockets for loose vocabulary. Anyway, we're going to be the directors uh, of our own story. It doesn't matter that we're doing an audio uh, an audio podcast. You're going to be inflicted with our our opinions, and it's there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel free to be uh, mad at us. Yeah, please comment below. It does boost engagement. Mm, hit that like <laughs> or dislike button. Thanks. Something I have noticed between like the different pronunciations that are out there is a lot of it seems to be like the American population versus the non-American population. Mm. In, in in this particular bubble, it's men versus women in the different pronunciations. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. No comment. <laughs> Anywho, uh, let's get on to actually talking about this character, Adolin. Now that we're <laughs> done beating that rabbit hole into yes, submission. That's right. Because because <laughs> with, with the different pronunciations, there there would have been angry comments if I didn't comment on it. Okay, so now we're done with that. Uh you're welcome. Um let's talk about some stuff with Adolin. And I think maybe one of the hottest topics with Adolin. Is one that happened a few books ago. It's that we kind of saw the ramifications of barely, if any, uh, is Adolin completely murdering Sadius. 
he 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 kills him at the end of Words of Radiance. Uh, he's definitely freaked out about Ray Shafir have like copying Sadeus's murder uh, in your Theron Oathbringer. And eventually Dalinar does like Adolin does say, hey, I killed Sadeus. And Dalinar's like, we'll talk later. And then they don't. They never do. And then there. And that, that's what it is. That, that's all we got. <laughs> it would have been interesting if we did get POVs from Adolin during the investigation of mm. Rishafia. Because like just like to see his inner thoughts of how he's dealing with this panic over this first copycat murder where Shalon's got all of these ideas and things. It's like, oh, maybe it's the same person. And he's like, it's not the same person. I know it's not the same person. <laughs> like, I, I just want to know, like, how freaked out was he at the time? Like, what was he thinking? Did, like, was, was he kind of like panicking in any direction? Because people make stupid decisions when they panic. But like things kind of go along fine with the story. So he obviously doesn't make any dumb decisions and or anything like that. But it, it just would have been fascinating. Because we're not really and, sure exactly how worried he is. I mean, there's some worry, but is he actually panicking or is he just like, man, my dad's going to be so pissed if he finds this out. You know, what level of of worry is he at? We he just seemed pretty worried in part one about it. Yeah, seemed pretty worried. And like, it definitely would have been interesting to get Adolin viewpoints. But I do ultimately like that we didn't. Because like you can see from Shalon's perspective, like he is going through stuff. But you kind of have to put in the effort as a reader to like engage with that plot line. It's something that is easily missed. But sometimes I want to work when I read and I want to actually have to put things together myself rather than having them spelled out to me, which like that's not necessarily what Brennan would have been doing if he had given Adolin like something else would have interesting would have happened there. But. I like how it happened. I think a lot of it is just these books are so huge. He can choose so many viewpoints for any scene and he just he doesn't want the bloat to get too extreme. He like he uh, mm -hmm. he, he really actually does want to cut down on it. And so like things like, yeah, it totally would be interesting to see Adolin POVs mm -hmm. uh, during part one. Is it necessary strictly for the overall story? Uh, well, Brandon mm -hmm. decided not to. Right. So he, he's saying no. But I feel like that'd be great fanfic, you know, like great fanfic yeah. opportunities here mm -hmm. uh, no, for exploring yeah. such things. I don't I don't really mind at all not having viewpoints in these chapters because, yeah, it's it's fun to pick up on his reactions and imagine him going on like, oh, cram o storms in his head. <laughs> so there is. I'm kind of disappointed that it went kind of pretty nowhere. Because, like, obviously the, the problem is that the scale of the threat kind of outpaced Sadias. It already outpaced Sadias by the end of Words of Radiance. That's why he died. Mm -hmm. But then, like, but by the point where people actually find out that it was Adol and the pronunciation is all over the place. That's anyway, okay. By the time he found out that it was Adolin who... Uh, killed Sadias, the, the plot is just not no longer relevant in the scale of oh, yeah. we just had the fight with the god of hatred outside <laughs> out there in the port. Mm -hmm. so, but I do wish it had like more ramifications other than, you know, Adolin and Dalin are, are a bit awkward around each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I get why it's gotten shuffled sort of into the background because everyone has bigger problems. Mm -hmm. But I can also see how some readers feeling kind of cheated of consequences there. Because yeah, I know like pre Oathbringer, <laughs> there were a lot of people who were like, oh, is Adolin going to go down a darker path? And it's like, nope, none of that. Like, it, like kind of matters, but not really. And so I can see why someone would be upset about that. Right. Like that totally makes sense to me. Um, I did. I honestly didn't mind it as I was reading Oathbringer, but I can see why someone would mind it. I think it makes a lot of sense that Adeline got away with it. He is the prince of the most powerful man in the world. And it, 
Dalinar can do whatever the hell he wants or hide whatever he wants. And it's a thing of life that rich people get away with things. I wish that had actually been explored or acknowledged directly instead of just, oh, Adeline's just going on doing things. And yeah, like you were saying, Rosal, like this awkwardness between Dalinar and Adeline afterwards. Like, if I, I just wish that if Brandon wanted to go with the rich people can get away with things, then like there was something there to make that explicit instead of just like having it as a you pick up on it in the background. And I feel like there was a, a dropped note there of what could have been done with Adeline choosing to stand trial for, you know, in, in the honor sprint thing is like, you know, we never saw any of this in his head, but, you know, he could have been thinking, you know, I totally got away with this other crap. And now I feel like I'm the right person to do this because, you know, may maybe I deserve to go through the ringer a little bit. Yeah, and this it is just, my retribution. You know, yeah, no, this is this is my penance sort of thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's yeah. also the thing that Sidious sucks. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. So, like, as readers, it's like, oh, well, he just killed a bad guy. Yeah. So, like, narratives killed like, bad, bad guys all the oh, time. Like, Who cares? Yeah. From a not a moral perspective, but from a reader perspective, overall, like, obviously, some people have issues with it, but overall, many people are okay with letting that lie because, it's like, oh, he just killed the bad guy. No harm, no foul. Like. Just continue on whereas like not exactly plausible with the world as established whereas like no it's like Sidious did deserve to die in my opinion but politically that should have opened a can of worms that really didn't happen we got a little bit of an in Oathbringer with um Amaram Eli Mm -hmm. um, appointing Amaram as the new Sidious and then at the beginning of the Doom of War where like, she's been causing issues on the Shattered Plains which gets wrapped up in a nice little bow at the beginning of Rhythm of War and isn't really dealt with going forward yeah we've kind of dealt with the Al Alethi High Prince politicking phase of mm -hmm. Stormlight it feels like like it, that's not really going to matter anymore it feels like yeah it, it, like it very much is a victim of the power scoop creep whereas like it's yeah. Sedius had to get out of the picture because he's no odium is in the picture now <laughs> Sadius isn't <laughs> compelling it's like yeah so it's like Dealing with the consequences of Sadius's arc isn't as important as dealing with what Odium is doing. I feel like there's a missed opportunity here because, like, you know, there there is the crime story plot. It's one of those stock crime story plots where the murderer has to solve a murder he committed. <laughs> right. Or so that could be a fun angle, which you know, the the book sort of makes gestures in that direction and never that never really goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And then there's also, you know, there is a fun alternate version of Oathbringer's opening where it's someone else who investigates Sadias and Adolin has to figure out how he's going to deal with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I know why it happened, but it's kind of an opportunity I miss happening. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring up a comparison um, that popped into my head just now. So like spoilers for Mistborn book two in particular, if you are still reading that and have not finished. Um, but it's interesting seeing how people react to Adeline killing um, Sadeus versus Vin killing Straff because they're both the bad guy and a good guy kills them and i feel like most people are like finally strap is dead and that was <laughs> such a great way for him to die right whereas with sadeus maybe it's um because like i joined the community at the time just after oathbringer so i was actually seeing people do theories about things whereas like i 
have no idea if people did that back for Well of Ascension um, or anything. But the other difference that like comes to mind is like Vin healing Straff is kind of like part of the climax of the book, whereas Alan killing Sedeus is almost like a cliffhanger for the next book. Mm -hmm. So it it did really kind of come across like there was something that was gonna happen here. And then things, yeah, just kind of fizzled out and like enough was done to satisfy like the base minimum of what you need for the story to continue. But like it didn't really go anywhere, but just the place it was in the book made it kind of seem a bit like, oh no, Adeline's done this thing. What's going to happen next? Nothing. The answer is nothing. <laughs> and I almost feel like maybe Brandon was going for the Indiana Jones shoots the swords guy moment. Right. Yeah, of, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is like, oh, this is going to be all, you know, twisty and terrible and ha ha ha. I'm a mustache twirling villain. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, you were, but now you're not. But <laughs> you yeah, know. It's, I, I, I do think you're right, uh, Jesse, in that they this is not a comparison I had ever noticed, but they are very similar in terms of what they do. But Vin killing Straff, like, it is part of the climax of the book, but Well of Ascension in particular has a very long section after the Battle of Luthadel, like the entirety of part six, which is like finding the well and all of that stuff and ruin getting released. So it's like the viewer, like that big climactic death happens and then a whole lot of other stuff is crammed in the reader's head. So it's like they don't get a, a chance to really latch on to that as like this, this is a, something that needs to be dealt with, whereas the death of Sadius, like it is, it's a cliffhanger. It's supposed to be setting up for something in the future. And it sort of does, but not necessarily what people were expecting. I feel like Brandon, <laughs> Brandon's epilogues kind of have been doing this. Like same with like Moash from Words of Radiance to Oathbringer. Cause you're like, oh, Moash is going to join the diagram in the next book. It's like, nope, mm -hmm. tote, completely different. Uh, yeah. Where like, I don't know, maybe some like better promises could be promised at the mm -hmm. end of these epilogues, perhaps. Or even um, Eshenai's death, where nobody is found, and it's like, as readers, it's like, oh, obviously that's setting up for her to return later on, and it's like, well, no. I, I, I think sometimes Brandon sets things up, and then when he's outlining the next book, he's like, oh, well, I don't actually want to do that. Like, yeah. We yeah. See, see a little bit of this in End of Bay of Kings with the Book of Endless Pages, that Yes, the book no longer ended up being called the Book of Endless Pages because it's a terrible name for an epic fantasy book. <laughs> but that or, just gets or... dropped completely. It's never mentioned again. It's like, well, even if the book's not named that, like he could have done something with that. It definitely feels exactly like what you said. That was mm -hmm. the point I was basically going to bring up as well. Like, like Brandon outline stonelight four and five together but he didn't necessarily do the other ones together he so like writing through and finishing a book and be like okay cool this is where i'm gonna leave this book and then like coming back two years later picking it like up the the structure of it and be like okay what do i want to happen in the next book and i can definitely see some of the things set up it's just like oh i don't actually want that to happen anymore or that can't happen anymore. So it's just going to go a different way. And these books are so big and there is so much in them that it is kind of inevitable that this would happen sometimes. But yeah, I think this is one, like the Adeline Sedeus um, storyline is one that people really noticed that mm -hmm. nothing really happened after this and it just kind of fizzled out. Yeah. Uh I feel like this is why Brandon really wants to write Mistborn Era 3 back to back because then he can solve that problem and have it be very cohesive. Whereas like these Stormlight books take so much effort that like I'm sure he knows 
some things that are going to happen in the next book, but not like all the details and like as he's drafting, maybe he's like, oh, no, this is a cooler way for this to go and things like that. Uh, whereas if he wrote, writes all of Air 3, then he can revise like the first book of that to set up the right things that he definitely wants because he's actually written a draft. Um, yeah, because so. that's what he did for Arrow 1 and it right, great. works very well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because it really does feel like there was going to be something setting up with Sadeus. And as I was reading Oathringer, like I didn't mind because like part one was fun there. And mm -hmm. but yeah, we really that that plot, we just kind of forgot about it. <laughs> he kind of did the same thing at the end of Oathbringer that he did at the end of Words of Radiance, because like you read Oathbringer, you're like, OK, cool. They're, they're investigating the murder, but nothing's really happening here. But like, this has to come out somehow. Like, it has to come out sometime. And then the end of Earthbringer is Adeline going up to Dalinar and being like, "I killed Sedeus." It's like, "Whoa, what's going to happen there?" And with the are like, not very much. And yeah, <laughs> like I mentioned, like back at the very beginning, I think Rhythm of War could have had just some small things in it that hinted at like. Maybe Dalinar is punishing Adeline and sending mm -hmm. him away. Or or like maybe he doesn't want to have to deal with like the ramifications if this falls out. Send my son somewhere else. That'll make it harder to like anyone to get to him. Or just something more. Um, but mm -hmm. we didn't really get any of that after the end of Earthbringer either, even though we finally got that confession. And then that was it. <laughs> Yeah. Spe speaking of the end of Oathbringer, another like epilogue thing that never came up again is like Shalon's gonna hunt Shiana, and it's like off screen, nothing happened, no nothing oh, at all. So sad. Yeah, so like I, I feel like Brandon has done that at the end of Stormlight books, and uh, like sometimes it's worked well with like Zeth and Nightblood at the end of Words of Radiance, like that. You know, we mm -hmm. we saw that, and we saw that happen in Oathbringer in. A satisfying way but then there's other things that brandon sets up at the at the epilogue and it's like we're going nowhere <laughs> nowhere i don't know if it's just recency bias but i feel like room of war has the has got the most like outlines that were set up at the end of overringer and were dropped at this mm. or at least vastly reduced in impact at the start of room of war mm -hmm. i remember I being that really worried when Brandon said that that was going to be a time jump because there was mm. so much left open at the end of Oathbringer. It's like, but aren't you going to deal with this stuff? The answer for some of it is no. And it just kind of moved on. And like, yeah. Rhythm of War felt fine to me reading it, but like, I, I totally agree. It is a victim of the time jump, I think. And like, I think the time jump worked pretty well for me but yeah like there's definitely some things that just were not explored at all yeah and it's it's times like these where i wish brandon still had time to write the annotations because mm -hmm. i feel like these are things that he would have touched on like okay like here's why we didn't really do much with that or it's like here's what ha here's what happened it just wasn't interesting Dalinar uh, and Adolin talked about Dalinar totally murdering his mom or something <laughs> like, hey, you know, maybe what did that conversation look like, even if it's not on the page? Yeah, like that would be really nice. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, the <laughs> the actual plot line in Rhythm of War, because I feel like we talked about uh, Adolin and Dalinar talking at the beginning. They go to Shadesmar. We go to the lasting integrity. Uh, and so mm -hmm. there's. And we have the honor spread trial and things. Uh, the trial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of Adolin and Shalon's stuff. They're, they're, they're going together as a married couple, and Shalon's doing great. Um, no problems going on there. Um, mm -hmm. None but, whatsoever. Paragon of mental health. <laughs> yes. Uh, what did you guys think of Shalon and Adolin's uh, relationship in in these in Rhythm of War? They are a very good couple. Just relationship goals over there. 
you know they have uh, very good communication in a way i do think that there is a lot of stuff that like shalon could share with adeline still but it's probably that it, she she doesn't feel comfortable sharing it at that point but i just remember the scene at the very beginning of rhythm of war i think and they're going back to erythiru and adeline kind of like asks what she's doing and she shares a little bit but not everything and then he's content to let her share when she is ready mm -hmm. which is like a really really good way to go about dealing with someone who has been through a lot of trauma and i feel like at this yes. point he is well aware if maybe not the details but like that she's been through quite a lot so yeah i i think they have good communication in that they know where each other's boundaries are and know how to stop before the boundaries. I, I do think that maybe Shalon should be a little bit more open. <laughs> yeah. But I'm so yeah. crazy. I think they're a very cute couple and like work well together. Yeah. One Adeline of Brandon's is, better couples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adeline is handling the relationship well and yeah. he's very much an anchor that Shalon needs in order to keep from going completely off the rails. And as we saw in Rhythm of War, it was still a near thing. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I like how well they fit together. And I like that the, the way their relationship works, the way none of Adeline's other relationships worked. And I think a lot of it has to do with how different Shalon was socialized than it was than other Alethi girls. And you know, she doesn't play the games that they do. And and Adeline could never wrap his head around the games. And that's why they work. I, I also like that he makes an effort to have a relationship with each of Shalon's alt alters. It's not yes. like, well, it, it's not like a thing where like, well, I'm married to Shalon. Like, she's the only one I care about. Like, don't care about Vale or Radiant. It's like, no, it's like, he and Vale are drinking partners and it's like he and Radiant are sparring partners, like like trying to like deal with the breadth of what Shalon and who Shalon is. He takes it in stride. He's doing yeah, great. He does. <laughs> and it's exactly like what hit me. That, and that is a lot of why their relationship works is because he just accepts mm -hmm. all of these pieces of her. I love the star spren scene where they're they're like actually talking to each other because like the the scenes we get uh of those two like just actually talking to each other are, are always good uh i feel like we're the brandon plots always move forward uh and so we don't get too many scenes like that but the scenes we get are really good uh so i i really liked that one um uh. i think a lot of it comes down to like shalon is a very independent person and Rosemary, was it you saying her upbringing? Yeah, her upbringing was very different yeah. from that of other, you know, of Alethi girls. Yeah. She isn't and around other girls. I think she's like, she's so used to doing things on her own. And I think that's why, like, Adeline being very good at being like, Shalon kind of needs a break. She doesn't realize it and she won't ask for it because she doesn't realize she can ask for it. And then we get the star spread scene and it's like, oh, that is what she needed. Um, so I, I think that helps on both the relationship side for like Adeline because like Shalon doesn't play the games, like you said. And I think a lot of that comes from the fact that she's so used to doing things herself that she just doesn't ask people for help and doesn't engage with others like in ways that other girls probably would so yeah i think that's part of why it works really well and he seems really good at picking up on like okay no this is the point that like that the independence is hurting her instead of being an asset mm -hmm. and then also in part two we get one of my favorite scenes in the book. So good is Adolin and Maya fighting in Shadesmar against those Tukari. So mm -hmm. good. Uh, yeah. 
And it is so good because in Words of Radiance, Adolin's talking to his sword and like we don't we don't know anything about mm-hmm. shard blades being spren or anything of being living creatures and like they get that moment in Oathbringer of Adolin's like he got her name uh, out of that mm-hmm. at, during that Battle of Thalen Field. And then they're just so awesome together. And I love it. It's so good. Yeah, I adore that scene. One, because it's great on its own. And also because it actually vindicated a headcanon about Maya that I had since Oathbringer. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, uh, ever since Oathbringer, since we got introduced to Maya, I really, really hope that she would be a more action spren, if that mm. makes sense. Because like, that's like the spren we usually get in those stories. They are basically your emotional support bodies. Like Syl has gets like one scene where she defends Kaladin from the from the death spren, but otherwise, uh, she and Pattern and other spren are mostly just there for like support and cheering from the sidelines, but. Maya gets this moment where she, Northbringer, where she jumps on an enemy and tries to like claw their face out. Mm-hmm. So I was really hoping that we'd get a continuation of that. And she turns out to be like, you know, a fighting badass. <laughs> and then, you know, we get the scene in Rhythm of War where she turns out to be exactly that. And it turns out that her clothes are actually a military uniform. And I am absolutely here for, for your mm-hmm. Maya. <laughs> So something that popped into my head as you were saying that of like the spren often serving as like the emotional support spren because radiants have a wide spectrum of mental illness they're dealing with. <laughs> well, that's kind of Adolin and Maya, but in reverse, where the spren mm. is the one that has like the deep trauma and mm. Adolin's the one just like being the helper, helping them along. And it's like, hey. Adolin is doing the same thing. <laughs> He's pouring something of himself into her to fill mm-hmm. her cracks the same way Investiture fills human cracks in the spirit mm-hmm. web. And, you know, that that's what's healing her, you know, in whatever manner it can. And I really wonder what kind of long term consequences that could have for him, because humans aren't really built to do that. Oh, that's true. Sure. And it makes you wonder what is going to happen with that down the line? Is is this going to damage Adeline in any way? So if you want to talk about how Adeline is the emotional support friend to Maya and how he's the one who helps fix her soul up with something of his own, then it goes way deeper than that because I'm pretty sure he is accidentally or not having basically the reverse Night Radiant arc going on. Oh, yeah? Okay, yes, I have actually plotted this out like a year ago and had it in the back of my head. Perfect. It's it's very silly, but... (laughs) Okay, so if you look at Kaladin and Syl first. So first Kaladin starts having conversation with, with Syl. And he starts doing strange things that ordinary humans cannot do. <laughs> and he learns more about who Syl is. Then he gets a shard blade. Then he gets shard plate. Now, if you look at Adolin, he first gets shard plate when he's born. Then he wins a shard blade in a duel. Then he properly meets Maya and learns more about her. Then he starts doing more things with his shard blade that most normal shard bearers cannot. And then he has a proper conversation with her. So he is, this is extremely cherry picked um, <laughs> reasoning for why he is a reverse radiant. And if you know the old conspiracy theory about Adolin Blade, this is totally what's going to happen. I was wondering if this is going to lead to like Adolin turning into a blade and shard play. Yes. yes. But it yes, only works exactly. in shards mirror, shard, shard, in, in shades bar. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it only it, works in Shadesmere. Shadesmere sounds good as well. Yes, I, yeah. Words are hard, guys. Words are hard. <laughs> it's like, for the record, I don't think Adolin Blade can happen. That but it said, would be- I do yeah. want a scene 
where Maya does like have to like grab his ankles and swing them as somebody, <laughs> but, like just as like his human body like whack. He's a buff guy. There's a lot of muscle there. Yeah. Well, especially if he's worried his plate at the time. What if instead of Ishar bringing Spren to the physical, uh, Ishar no. uh, then brings Adolin from the physical to the cognitive, and then he's like a spirit Adolin Spren thing in the in Shadesmar, and then you can't, and then Maya can summon him as, as a blade with Ishar shenanigans. Maybe it's all coming together. Just <laughs> from the, the biggest issue the I see there is that like, he's, he's already got a cognitive aspect though yeah i, just, I guess yeah. like you could like, separate that from the physical is that what you're saying i don't know like, like, you, you, i don't know you can't really take alan from the physical and put him into the cognitive because either you're physically moving him there which he can do himself or like when he's in the physical he's got a cognitive aspect in shades bar look i just no, wanted I just, to make also, and blade work okay oh, no no no, <laughs> you're no here, here, here's what it is here's what it is <laughs> with you know if adeline is in the real world then Maya can summon him to Shadesmar as a blade. <laughs> that's that's the Adolin blade idea. Yeah, yeah. there we go. And it only works in Shadesmar. Easy. <laughs> I, I hey, but like so also Eric, what you're describing, I I think is basically what a cognitive shadow is. That's, so that's that would true. require Adolin's death. So <laughs> what if it's like? You, you, you know those Spren where in Shadesmar, there's a lot of them, but you only see a little bit of them in the physical realm. What if there's some shenanigans where, like, in Shadesmar, you just see, like, one body part fatal and, like, you just see, like... Oh. <laughs> no, I th- no, I think I'm actually onto something here. So, this is the way... This, this, is, this is how... Brandon is gonna wind up killing Adeline. Adeline is gonna okay. die. Okay. And yeah, sorry, Eric, you're totally wrong. Adeline is not gonna survive. Look, if he but becomes a shard blade, I'm into that. He's already what's gonna happen is he's already so connected to Maya with what he's done for her that he does become a cognitive shadow. He's tethered to Maya, and now she can summon him as a blade. I, I, look, I gotta be honest, if that happened, I'd be totally okay with Adolin dying if he becomes no. Maya's sh- cognitive shard blade. Like, that's so <laughs> wacky. I love it. <laughs> no, I was I was going to take it in a different Breaking direction because like, like Eric was talking about about Ishar's experiment Yeah, and I had this brain brain bolt like, okay, what if the way Ishar is bringing Spren from the cognitive realm is by somehow swapping them with people. <sighs> okay. Right, okay. Wait a moment. So this is how all those two carry got into the into Shadesmore in the first place. As just part oh, of easy. the experiment. Nice. And then I kind of, as we were talking about, I went further, like, what if he ends up swapping Adolin, uh, Adolin and Maya? <laughs> And Maya God. manages to survive because Adolin is bonded to her. So we get Adolin Blade, but in the physical realm. Everything is just... <laughs> this, this, this is the we weirdest are... YouTube chapter that, that has ever been. Uh, I think this would be a great just... clip. This is a great this clip. This chapter just, is going to be it's Adolin Blade series. It, it's just, we're, we're totally... It's just Adolin mind. Blade. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Okay, steering back to <laughs> something Funny probably team. a bit more possible. I don't think Adolin is gonna gonna become Maya's shard blade. I could be wrong, but it's pretty funny. But there's definitely this plot line where like Adolin is helping to heal Maya, right? Mm-hmm. That's and that lets you know, Maya finally say we chose at the trial, right? Where, which is so good. Do do we think, do we think Maya's going to be, be, be totally healed? I I don't know. I think she's going to go back to the way she was unless, you know, the, the, the captured Spren gets released and all of the dead eyes get fixed that way, or at least partially fixed. Though then that's going to also be an interesting rebound on what happens to the bond between Maya and Adeline because of what he's done. 
your theory that he is giving something of himself to heal her soul as like an inverse of what Spren will actually do. I don't think we can say definitively that's happening. Like right. that, that is very much a theory that highly I don't. Implied. Cause, cause like before she speaks at the trial, he's like f- focusing on pushing energy at her. He is trying to do that. And, and I mean, it's, it's in his internal monologue. Okay. I don't recall that. I don't think it's possible. I, but, I mean, there's capital C connection going both ways, yeah, right? It, and so, like, like, yeah. Like, there, there is naturally an interchange. It's like normal radiance gives something to their spread. I don't think what's happening is anything beyond that. Like, I don't think what's happening is dangerous to Adolin in any way. I, since we were talking about, like, him giving uh, Maya strength, there is, it is actually in the book. It's, if you want me to quote it directly, Maya's howls came to a crescendo of anguish, and she fell silent, gasping for breath. Weak, too weak. Take it, Adeline thought to her. Take some of my strength. She looked right at him, and despite her scratched out eyes, she saw him. Adeline felt something, a warm deep within him. So, however you want to interpret that. So I definitely think that there's like capital C connection between them. Um, the I guess the bit that I don't agree with on that theory is that it's like the inverse necessarily of exactly what's going on with Spren in humans. Um, I think that it's just something different that this is something to do with connection, but it's not like any other process that has been seen before because this does not seem to have been seen before. Going on to the subject of can Maya be fixed? Th- this obviously this has been a question since we knew shard blades are spread. Yeah. In words of radiance. Yep. And so it's been a theory that Adolin is going to revive his sword, sense words of radiance, because we saw him personifying his sword long before there was any hint that they were people. Rhythm of War gave us a big hint that even if Radiance broke their oaths early, like it did not result in dead eyes until Mariudo Mishram was captured. Yep. It screwed up Roshar in deep and fundamental ways that we don't really understand. Stay tuned. Which um, actually makes some of Brandon's comments prior to that make more sense where he said like that there was something else missing like like you needed more than the radiant to re-swear their oaths like there's something else that needs to happen likely body to mishram stuff i think it's possible for maya to be healed it she might not be like back to like what she was pre recreants uh, like there'd probably mm-hmm. still be some damage involved. Uh, I f- feel like we, we we definitely would need to release Biodomishram, uh for mm-hmm. that to work. Uh, I don't think once Biodomishram's released, that will fix all dead eyes. I feel like mm-hmm. you would need to do some process like Adolin's doing of like connecting with uh, the Spren uh, and things mm-hmm. and re-swearing the oaths maybe uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, like Adolin hasn't gotten that far, so like we don't even know if mm-hmm. he is necessarily going to swear oaths because he has not. Adolin probably would still need to do more than like a bit more after even Rhythm of War and Biodomistrum to be released for that to like start totally working. Uh, but I mm-hmm. really think that that's where that's going in book five. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Go ahead. Um, I. I agree about uh, Badamishram. Like, I think that Adeline can get Meyer as far as he can with whatever is going on, but I don't think that she will get to a point where she is, like, even, like, kind of semi-functional beyond what she is now. Like, maybe she will be able to talk a little bit more, but I don't think she's going to be like holding conversations or anything until whatever was taken when Bam was locked away 
is given back. Um, I, I, I don't think Adeline's becoming a radiant this way. Like, maybe once, um, like, if she gets back whatever was taken by locking Bam away, once she gets that back, then they could mm-hmm. become radiant, just like regular radiant spread bonds. Um, okay. But I don't think, like, what he's currently doing is going to turn him into a radiant in a different special way. Also, I found a really random little fact. <laughs> Can I share it about Maya? Sure. Mm-hmm. I, I would really like for Maya to be able to uh, converse with people again, because at the very end of Rhythm of War, it, like her name turns up in one of the Honor Spread legal books about um, treaties between the Spren before the recreants, like it, w- within their society, like she was just involved in that somehow. So, oh, so I want, I want to know more about that. Yeah, what's <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be able to talk so she could tell us about like the yeah. Spren treaties and like the the, the Spren wealth of the past. Yeah, because it, it was the like the proof blended found that okay, this isn't a random name Adolin came yeah. up with. Like this oh, is right. that's a right. yeah. name. Right. Yeah. That right, he right, right, should right. have no way of knowing. Yeah. Other than uh, theoretically from the spread. So yeah, if it looked like I was kind of not paying attention before, I was. It totally was. I was just frantically trying to remember if this is a thing and like checking the copper mind and mm. stuff. But yeah, and yeah, I will apparently say, like that's actually a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to see Adeline become an irradiant. I want to see him and Maya become something different. Mm-hmm. I I want to see where where this path goes before we knew about the whole by omission involvement a theory i liked i don't ne- didn't necessarily know if this was the direction that was going to be taken but i thought this something extra that needed to happen w- might have been an infusion of investiture from Skyanat. oh no yeah to like make yeah spren like Gliss and Toomey, where it's like mm-hmm. it's they're not evil, they're not like they're just different. That that might be the the bridge that gap of what's missing, which still might be a way to heal a dead eye. But true, I do wonder if like healing the dead eyes, mm-hmm. whether they actually would ever want to enter a spren bond again with a human to create a nice radiant because even though like they were a part of the choice to break the bonds like they could like nobody knew that this was going to happen but this was Mm -hmm. still like a massive trauma for them all so Mm -hmm. it makes me wonder like if like maybe maya gets better um and becomes more like her regular self and then Maybe Adeline asks, like, do you want to be in a spread bond and do nice radiant stuff? And she's just like, no, no, I don't. I don't ever want to do that again, because that's that's what put me in the state for so long. And even though I, it might not happen again, like, I, I don't I, I've been through too much to do that again on the chance that it might not happen again. It- and also, Maya knows exactly the reason why they're like, no, we need to break the bonds. Even if she, like, didn't know, like, that it would cause her to go Yeah, they thought state. it would hurt, but they didn't, they didn't think this would happen. Right. Like, so, no. so if Maya's revived and, like, we have her memories, then we get to know that, that answer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we instantly yeah. know the answer to yeah. why that was. Depending on how much of her memory is still sure. intact. For sure. For sure. Uh... So, like, it's oh. easily possible. It's like, no, guys, you cannot be radiant. That is a terrible idea for X, Y, and Z. No, we. that's why we ended this, you know, type thing. Yeah. I, I yeah. wonder if Meyer is the, maybe not, like, actual on-page viewpoint, but the viewpoint we get into the recreants in the end. Mm, that'd be really cool, mm. honestly. It would, it would be, be nice. fun if, like, the the ongoing interlude plotline from, like, the fifth book was Maya. Maybe oh, yeah. having flashbacks or something. That'd be cool. That'd be really yeah. cool. 
that'd be really cool. I I, I agree that uh, freeing by the mission, I don't think should automatically fix all of the dead eyes. It just like it's her freedom now means they can be healed. Yeah, but going off of what Jesse was saying, it's like I do want there to be a spectrum of reactions among this brand. It's like they're people. They're not all going to react in the same way. It's like, I think some of them never wanting to be in a radiant bond again. It's very plausible. Um, and likely should be represented because, yeah, that, that's a legitimately terrible thing. But the hard thing is not knowing the secret that broke the radiance. And like, OK, but what really was so bad that they did this thing? Yeah. That all the spread agreed. Yeah, yeah my yeah. biggest worry is that it's going to wind up being anticlimactic to us. It's like I, I, I'm very curious to know what it is, but I'm also afraid of breaking the mystery because right now I feel like the mystery is a bigger deal than actually knowing the secret is going to be. Yeah, I fully anticipate it not being as big a deal as we would like it to, but. Um, to kind of like wrap up my point, it's like I I don't want that for Maya. I want Maya and Adolin to form a bond. I like I I just want that for them. So like I don't want Maya to be the ones that like no no more. She she will retire peacefully into the Shadesmar countryside. Like no, want her no. to be but even Adolin's if they partner. don't. Form- even if they don't form a bond, like I want her to still stick around with Adeline, like be like, cool, we've been best friends for however many years now. I'm just going to stick around with you now and just maybe Isha's experiments get better and she just goes to live in the physical. Maybe. It's no, possible. I, she's a sprint advisor. Mm-hmm. I actually yeah, she's wonder. If, yeah. I actually wonder if it wouldn't be opposite that uh, Adeline is the one who goes to live in the Shades because. Like, I'm wondering, because, like, he obviously took the first steps on path of being the strand diplomat or a left car. And also, since you did find that bit where we know that she was important in the past, so I wonder if it would not even be, for example, the case that they fix her. She decides that, you know, appreciate having this bond that fixed me up, but I think I would like to go now. And she maybe goes back to the cultivation sprint to, I don't know, assume some sort of position of leadership with them, with Adeline as diplomat to spread kind. That would still mean that they would get to interact regularly, just in a different, you know, different sort of dynamic. That would be a, a great way to for Adeline to be like, I am not like Dalinar and I am taking my own path. That's like not even being like a ruler type thing, you know, and Mm -hmm. him dealing with a very different set of circumstances. That could be very interesting. And he's so genuine with like everything he does, but like going to lasting integrity, like there, there is the politics side of it. And he knows that that's there, but he like, genuinely wants this to work and like just really wants to create a good relationship with the spren that isn't necessarily like built on background politicking or like hidden motivations no he just he just wants a better relationship with the spren so i think that would work really well with like the, the fact that the the spren is still like mm, nah we we don't really want to interact with you guys and this this whole alliance thing we don't really like that idea the fact that they're still at that point like having someone who doesn't have like secret motivations to like take power or that away from them and like just genuinely wants to be like on the same footing as the other friend like that would work he would work so well as like the human liaison to the spren world and i want that so badly right now <laughs> i'm gonna be really sad if we don't get it now <laughs> that's very cool sure. something we haven't touched on really at all is that as you describe Adolin does 
to an extent exemplify edge dancer ideals like he, with his relationship with Maya, which is probably because he is living up to the ideals that she is attracted to is part of all of this. So it's how this would happen with other Radiant Sprint. Who knows? I want cool things to happen for Adolin. I, I, I want them to ha- do cool magic stuff together. I don't want them to be separate. I, yeah. But I, and I also think it's important for a dead eye to bond a friend, like not, not bond a friend, bond a person again. <laughs> mm. I think that would be a huge thing for all of this. That like, yep. yes, we thought in the past that this was important, but what's happening more like we need i need to bond him like that is more important now than Hmm. what was happening back then and i could see with Mm -hmm. uh maya she'd be like i would never bond anyone else (laughs) but i will bond you like you 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 are a very (laughs) special person you you brought me from uh, like you you brought me back to life uh Mm -hmm. and like like you, you are very important to me, uh, type thing. Like I could see that. I do want uh, Maya to bond Adolin. I think that'll be very cool and a different dynamic with her being, uh, having been a dead eye, right? Uh, but I still think even if they bond, they could have a spren liaison role, and I still think that's possible even if he doesn't predominantly live in the uh, in the cognitive. Like I, I still think that's a. Uh, that's going to be a big moment if like a spren who died in the recreants rebonds uh, a human like that's going to be a big deal to the spren. Yeah, I also like feel like their dyna- dynamic will be very different regardless of what happens, because mm. like like I'm like we brought up before, like she's not really an emotional support spren. She's more like will stand by you and help you with a sword spren, which you know they if they were to be primarily like traveling through the cognitive being the being the diplomats to spread then that would be a different way a spread and radiant working together more less a uh, less a guy with a ghost and more a partnership of equals yeah. yeah and i think that's the thing is that he's always treated her with respect and like as a, much of an equal as he could at any given stage when he like didn't know that she was a spren, but then like when he found out, like he never treats her as lesser. Like he always tries to treat her on the same level as everyone else. And like you're right that there isn't that power dynamic between them that we see between a lot of the other radiants and spren, and that makes a very big difference. Like they're best friends. Like mm-hmm. they're, they're best friends. And and I think also, like, depending on how much Maya remembers, like, it will be a very much a partnership of equals because, like, who knows how, like, long she's existed and what she's experienced, right? Like, that could be super interesting. And wow, that's this is not where I thought uh, an an Adel and Shalon uh threesome that that w- would go here but uh it's like <laughs> i was like usually i think of adolin and shalana as the power couple but like adolin and maya is a power couple you know like it's like to a certain extent like i also want she was in that book about um like the treaties and everything but i kind of want her like and if like she's this super wise and powerful spread that would be totally cool totally support that but what if she's also just kind of like adolin where it's like she's very strong and like but like mentally direct i believe <laughs> how adolin was described <laughs> but like, i just want the two of them like yeah like you have a problem that needs taken care of they can take care of it and you need it's... research done don't call them <laughs> And so, like, she was around for all these important things in the past, but she's like, I, I don't know. I, I was there for guard duty. Like, stuff happened. Like, eh. <laughs> that's true. That's that's a way to take it too. And it's like when you combine the the like reference to her in the treaties book with what Rasa was saying earlier about how like her clothing was resemblance of like military clothing or something. She totally could be just like 
that military general that was the one that signed peace treaties and like was at the front of things but doesn't necessarily know a bunch about everything else that that'd be yeah that'd be pretty cool yeah like i do kind of want her to be like scholarship but just tell us everything but that's mostly because i just want knowledge about shadesmire and spren i just have this like my moment in mind where it's like she's she's healed and like shalon goes to her like okay like explain everything that happened and like maya just can't help it's like we got a little of this with yasna and the heralds where like she went to them for all this knowledge and like she got a lot of knowledge and then it was super underwhelming that like yeah. oh this cool thing actually wasn't very cool but with Maya it's just like I think he was wearing a green shirt maybe <laughs> who knows I I love the idea of like Maya being the opposite of a scholar but I do also kind of want her to be just the great, the same way Adolin is the greatest duelist on Roshar. I want her to be like the greatest sprint duelist. Oh, that'd be sweet. I have in my head, uh, I have in my head just imagine Adolin is in the middle of fighting and Maya is just sitting on his shoulder offering commentary like, no, you did this wrong. That's a misstep. You should have done that. You're the terrible at this. Kid. She's been around for <laughs> yeah. thousands of years. It's like, I have thousands of years of dueling experience. You're, you're pretty mm-hmm. good. Could be better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like if if Adorin thought Bash, Vasher was a strict teacher, this is someone who's like <laughs> ten times older than Vasher. Mm-hmm. Ooh. What if we go into like so my six or something, and like the opening scene is like this big jewel, and like one of them's Adeline, and you don't know who the other one is, and then the other person just like whoops his ass, and then like it turns out <laughs> to be Maya, or, or, or it's like Maya versus Vasher or something, and she's like up there with the scholar i don't remember the name of who is apparently very good at fighting our steel uh, our steel she's like up there with our steel as like yeah the best swordsman in the entire cosmere i need this <laughs> yeah actually going to the scene uh, ella was describing where like instead of her being on his shoulder directing everything like sh- she's still the sword she is backseat driving the duel like <laughs> as the sword is like nope don't swing me that way like no other way <laughs> that could be funny too that could be pretty funny the too. entire scene of an argument between Adeline and Maya while he's fighting using her sword that would and, be she, really and he's like no this is this is the best way to do it no no you're wrong this stance this stance banter this banter one. banter yes mm. yes I need this so much this is this is like redoing the princess bride dueling scene in <laughs> but with the, uh, the, the, first, the human and yes. the sword yeah no love it so i think we all want maya to be revived uh but it's just there there's some contention whether we want adolin to be a radiant yeah yeah we, we want her to be revived but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to be revived in her full sprint state just enough to have some level of agency again. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. I mean, there, there's who knows what a revived Spren could be like. Like, it, it might not even be possible for a new Nahelbond to form, potentially. It's going to be very interesting seeing what she is like um, in the next book following the, the trial, because, like, end of the trial like she of course does like the epic we chose moment but then like she's really tired afterwards and like Adeline I think comments on it I think it's his POV about how like she's just like trying to rest because she's obviously so tired and it makes me wonder like she seems always more cognizant or more aware after the trial than she necessarily was beforehand like I just for anyone who's ever experienced mind fog it to me kind of reminds me of like the difference between when you're in mind fog you're you're just like autopilot you're not really connecting with anything versus like when you're not and you're more aware of your surroundings and can just interact better um and it it, it makes me wonder where well what will we see of her like immediately following the trial like in in um in book five yeah i definitely want to see more of her like also, because she's a cultivation spren, because like 
there is this thing that I'm not sure if there's much to talk about, just something I noticed because we get to interact for longer periods of time with two other cultivation strands in the story. There's, uh, you know, Wendell, or however you people pronounce it. Wait, what do you, <laughs> what do you say? Wendell. Yeah, no, it's Wendell. Yeah. That's how everyone says it. Yeah. I, 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 was afraid that, I was afraid that someone's going to tell me that they pronounce it in like audio books like Wendell oh, <laughs> or Wendell oh, or no. something. That's, that's a dark timeline right there. <laughs> Okay, there, there's Comment Wendell. below if you pronounce it Windle. <laughs> Windly. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. So there is Lift Spren. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is the uh, customs guy from Celebrant? Celebrant. The Oathbringer city. Yeah, Celebrant. And they are both cultivation Spren, and they both aren't really like combat -y guys, to put it mm. that way. They they usually they and they avoid danger. They are very kind of fussy. So it seemed for a time that this is like the cultivation sprint personality type. Like you know, cryptics are fascinated by math and lies, and cultivation sprint are fussy and kind of uh, avoid conflict avoidant. Unless, but then we have Maya. The, yeah, unless most of the non-conflict avoidant cultivation sprint were already radiant spren and all got broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like this is this is what I wonder if we're going to see. Because like Maya is obviously a fighter; she has a military uniform. So I would love to see just Maya get to interact like someone from this old generation who seems to be more militant with this new generation that seems to be not that. Um, just to add on to that some some extra facts that we have about cultivation spread is they're not very important politically um i don't think that they have necessarily a, a city themselves um they obviously have like their circle of elders people their ring something the ring their ring is it actually called it the is ring? actually okay. called the ring yeah okay like <laughs> they've got that but i don't think they actually have a city um they're not politically important and the ones that have rebonded humans are considered quite highly by others in the cognitive realm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, it was the ring ordering, like, hey, like, we're going to start rebonding yeah. people. So, yeah. Yeah, like, they made the, the decision instead of, like, the, the other or uh, the other orders that where it was like more individual um mm -hmm. i right. do yeah. wonder if cultivation herself had any hand in that Interesting thought. they they seem to i i swear i remember wendell talking about he calls her mother like, yeah he calls her mother and like so she ha may have a relationship with this particular type of spren which also makes me wonder what would happen if Adeline went to the Night Watcher and brought Maya. What would cultivation that do? That would be that. That Ooh. sounds like an amazing scene that I want to see. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Honor originally created Honor Spren, and then the Stormfather created mm -hmm. Honor Spren after the Recreants, right? So yeah, yeah. that's not yes. terribly surprising if cultivation made cultivation Spren directly. So, like, that checks out. <laughs> On the subject of Adeline becoming radiant. Uh huh. Is that currently he is the non radiant of the cast, mm -hmm. which is an important perspective to have. With like, yeah, we have it in like Mistborn. Th the non powered characters, yep, are very important. The thing is, the way Roshar and Magic works, how being a nice radiant works is like anyone can do it yeah you just need the spread so it's like adolin i do think is wor worthy whatever that means i feel like he should have the opportunity to become a radiant he shouldn't be precluded from that because we need a non-radiant perspective i feel like there is even like brought up near the start of rhythm of war buddy i think why am I misremembering this? I swear I remember a scene where Adolin and Calden are talking and Calden says that Adolin would probably be a Radiant already if he unbonded Maya. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. I do remember that. And he just won't do that. 
No, he absolutely yeah, so, will not do that. So it's an interesting because in a way he is basically making a choice to not be one because he wants to be there for Maya. Mm-hmm. I wonder if it might, like the whether he becomes a Radiant or not might tie in with whatever the conclusion is with his um, like conflict with Dalinar and like the mm-hmm. idea of like, I don't want to, like I'm my father's son, but like, how do I be my own person? Maybe like Adeline specifically chooses not to be a radiant so that he can go a different path. Whereas like becoming the radiant is kind of like following a similar path of power that like his father took. Um, generally speaking, not like the specific steps or anything. Mm. Just a thought that popped into my mind. Yeah. I will remember yeah, my my mom who my father burned to death. <laughs> edge dancer oh, for, for adolin yeah yeah um only enough the the reasoning you gave with him not want not wanting to be like his father was actually reasoning i saw some people bring up for why he would become a bondsmith for bad omishram <laughs> I, I have not heard yeah. this before I, i've never it's, heard it, this it before but it was a few. I have seen it a few discussed a few times that he, because he wants to, I think that I am very terribly misrepresenting it. I'm, I am terribly sorry, people who do like this idea. I, I don't dislike it. I just don't not invested in it. Uh, the idea was that because he Adeline wants to not be like his father, he would become the opposite of that, and the. It would be either that he doesn't want to become a bondsmith and then becomes a bondsmith, but of, you know, an unmade, or that uh, he uh, wants to become the opposite and that's why he bonds Adam Ishram, or that he, you know, sacrifices himself by bonding her to restore the uh, Dead Eyes Prem. Yeah, that last one I could definitely see Adela doing. If he decides, well, imprisoning Bottle Mishram broke all the dead eyes, and just releasing her didn't seem to fix it. So I'm gonna bond her and see if we can figure out how to make this work. That would that is a hundred percent crap. Adelin, eh, crap. Adelin would pull. Yeah, it's like. I infecting me. I have long been a supporter of the theory that uh, Baido Mishram and Siana are going to become Bondsmith's friend. I I like the parallels. Yeah, yeah. it it f- fills out um, the the spectrum of like different light creating spren. Ooh, um, yeah, five. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, it's the only one missing would be. Cult, um, the cultivation odium light. So, sure. Yeah. Um, I don't think Adolin is the one for that at all. Like, no. Yeah, I don't think I want Adolin to bond anyone other than Maya. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Uh, what if we just release Bottom Ishram and she just uh, kills everyone? Wouldn't that be better? <laughs> <laughs> She'd just be a this badass. Is how- this is how Stormlight Five is gonna end. Yeah. They release Bad and she, she just kills me. I'm cool with she, that. She needs Adeline to keep her under <laughs> on a leash. Mm-hmm. And I mean, mm. like Adeline bonding Bad Mishram doesn't preclude him for keep from keeping the bond with Maya. I guess so that I, I guess that is that technically true. Yeah. Yeah, it's not impossible to bond two friends. Just very very hard. Mm-hmm. The friends have to like each other. Is kind of the the gist that I got from it, because like when the um, the Radiant quiz came out, like so many of the uh, characteristics of the different orders, they really synergize super well together. But it's kind of maybe think of like you make a friend and they become your best friend. And then you're like, I want to like bring this other person into our group and they're also going to be my best friend and just like making sure that the two people that like each other to begin with but uh also that it's not done in a way that's like it kind of feels like you're just 
ignoring me or replacing me or, or or like I'm not enough for you or maybe maybe friendship is not like the best analogy well, here. Like kind of I think, <laughs> yeah, like I, I think actually like poly relationships like yeah. th- this is much more of a problem. I, I think the thing I wouldn't like is that like bottom Ishram, no matter how cool we're imagining Maya revived being bottom is 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 a step above that in power level and lots of things uh and so there would be some power dynamic issues and i don't think that's just my love of bottom uh personifying how badass she's gonna be yeah bottom is definitely in a different weight class of spren so it's like so it's like i don't think th- there would be enough space to have a bondsmith spread and then another spread is like two normal size spread totally like bondsmith spread i'm like i don't think there's room like imagine uh like you bond an honor spread and the storm <laughs> like it's just that's, that's not gonna that's not gonna work here mm-hmm. i don't think nodem and the storm father they, they get along really well like that i think they actually would here, here's a better poly radiant relationship. What if Adel and Maya and Notum? Nice. Mm. I'd be into that. Because I <laughs> that I is like, more plausible to me. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I loved how Notum was in in rhythm before. Like I thought that was really good, and I, I love Adel and just being the good guy, saving him. Honor is not dead so long as he lives in the hearts of men. Yeah. Just trying to look up that quote to remember the beginning of it. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Just know- Hell yeah, yeah. Nodum. No. I'm just now imagining Adolin just bonding spren after spren. And eventually Sean is like, ah yes, my husband, me, my husband, and he's 50 bonded spren. Oh, it he's is. Just- Instead of his girlfriends, it's his friend bonds. He, he has. So Alan many. didn't realize you weren't supposed to adopt all of the dead eyes. <laughs> They're all outside lasting just, integrity, apparently. They all came to see him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like someone has to take care of them. <laughs> it's terribly historical. down to the point because I kept forgetting about it. But yeah, I wanted to talk about the gathered spren. Yeah, the gathered spren are so weird, right? A little bit creepy. It's like we never, we haven't had an explanation of like why they were there, what they were coming for exactly. But it's like, was it Maya? Was it Adeline? I really hope that we get follow up on that one because that'll be a downer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Doesn't get answered, but they seem to like know that something was happening and like where to go. Like a big deal. Maybe destiny. Oh, Destiny. Yes. Well, and um, that'll be super fun because, you know, Ishar went to the cognitive realm. Lasting integrity is near to Car, so Ishar could go in there. And I-, I have long thought that maybe Book Five, their plot line can open with Ishar literally like attacking uh, Lasting Integrity. And, you know, maybe he wants to send some of those new honor spren that are going out. Uh, send those suckers to the physical realm. What could go wrong? Thanks a lot, Ashar. Uh, or any of these dead eyes. There's plenty of spren for him to work with. Oh no. It would actually be fun given Kalak is also like still there. Ooh, and then Kalak goes out. Oh yeah. Him. Yeah. It's true. I, I don't think like I don't think Kalak is in a mental state where we could have a Herald showdown, but I want to have a Herald the showdown. The insane Herald showdown of Kalak, like being scaredy cat and Ishar just being whatever he's doing. That would be, that would be quite the thing. Although, I, I love, I hope Kalak just hangs out with Adolin and Shalon for whatever this plot line is. I need that in my life of just like, yes. all right, we're just carrying along this crazy Herald and he's just being crazy the whole time. Yes, I, I want Kalak to be like, you, you know how at the end of Wars of Radiance, everyone is fighting and having drama and Sebariel is just sitting in a tent drinking wine. I want Kalak to be kind of like this, like everybody's ha- having drama and meanwhile Kalak is just sitting there in the background offering occasionally just commentary. I'm having, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I forgot that scene, and it's one of my favorite scenes in Rhythm of War. Not Rhythm of Art. 
Words of Radiance. Words of Radiance. Words of Radiance. Thank you. The acronyms, they're Words. too similar. Yeah. Like it's, ah. I mean, Jesse can attest. Sometimes words that are not in any way related to each other just get flipped in my brain. Yeah, I, I love Sabariel so much. So much. I could actually see as well the honest friend that are left at lasting integrity because they the the oldest friend like C, uh CKS, Sekier, whatever you say, like they kind of get disgraced, right? Like at the end by everything that's happened. And like I wonder if like the the younger spren that are more uh on the side of like, hey, maybe we should help people, um, would actually just like kick the lock out because he's just kind of <laughs> being almost the pet of the council mm. for most of the time that he's there. And he just kind of does what he wants until the council's like, we want you to do something else. So like, if they're kind of like renewing the council then like they might actually just be like oh you guys are leaving you, you take him with you we don't want him you have to you have to take him with you now mm-hmm. you never got properly housebroken and you know you're gonna be wandering around so it's fine yeah i, I wonder if he knew maya was like the treaty person if kalak knew her before like Possible. maybe he's just gonna maybe now that he knows this is maya He's just gonna have this bit of oh yeah, I remember when she did that and that. Yeah, that hey, honestly, um, that's legitimately plausible. But he just could have forgotten before then, right? Like that's mm-hmm. that's possible. Let me tell you tales of your spring. Yeah, let me tell you about what we need to do to fix Badamishram. I'm just gonna open like you know how Yasna opened Words of Radiance, where it's like. Shalana, I am going to tell you facts that you need because Way of Kings was there was a lot going on. Let me tell you things. And Kalak's just like Adolin and Shalan. I am going to tell you about Badamishram. Let me tell you lore. I'm like, yes, please give me lore about Badamishram. Did they, did they actually have that conversation at the end of Rhythm of War? We just got skipped over it. I guess that's true. He, well, yeah, so, somewhat uh, for sure, because uh, there was. I guess that's I guess that is true. It, it's hard to say if Shalon was, you know, playing it up towards Mraze, like how much she knows or does not know uh, in that last chapter. Yeah, because yeah. they, they did have a conversation and they did have enough of a conversation that he uh, freed the, the Sion, Ayla, Ayla. Definitely not a name that surprises me every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> it I, makes I can you t- feel better. When I first started reading Mistborn, uh, there's a character in the first, ep- uh, first episode, the, the first chapter called Jesse. So, oh yeah, because that's about. the ska that gets, uh, yeah, taken to the manor. And- yeah, yeah. Oof. Great. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> our. Or unintentional cameos just keep having terrible things happen to them. <laughs> Shalon is so overpowered at this stage with like resources she has available to her. She's like got a herald. She's got a seon. She's got a friend. Like she is set. She has two friend. She's got two. She's got two friend. That's right. Uh, and she's, she's got to do her, emotional support. <laughs> and then she's got her husband with. His dead eye. It's like there, there's a lot of stuff happening in that party there. It's just like we have all of the ingredients for a good solid info dump. Yes. Give and it to me. this leave it to this fandom to be like, please, we want some info dumps. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's kind of implied uh, in that last chapter, Shalon and um, Adeline and everyone that like. Shalon's going to try and work on her relationship with Testament in the same way that Adeline oh, yes. did with Meyer. Oh, yes, and that's he's right. Like, that's right. Like coach her through it to like see oh. if he can do the same thing. Oh, that's uh, so good. And, and because she is Testament's original radiant, she's probably got a leg up on. Got a, yeah, got I guess a like they've already got a bond there so yeah 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 because like she can summon testament as blade like the, yeah. the, the blonde the blonde still exists the blonde <laughs> still exists the, well, technically no the blonde screaming. still does ex- exist because radiant 
Yeah, it's and there. Radiant's still there. <laughs> and and in this case, there's there's no screaming too, which tells you that there's something a little bit different going on. And Brandon has <laughs> said in the past that if the Spren's original Radiant was still around, like stuff could be done. All foreshadowing to the fact that, hey, here's a modern dead eye. Radiant is still around. Oh, can do stuff. I'm so excited for Adel and Shalon plot line. Like, this is going to be good. Yep. Like, the question is, like, are they going to, in the next book, go in the direction of, like, back to join up with the Eritrea crew and do stuff there, 10 days, all of that? Or are they just going to, like, go off against Mraes in their own saga and just like have their own adventure where they're just like t- trying to take down the ghost bloods and find Badamishram. they're too far away like yeah like they're no, they don't have enough travel time to get back to earth theory or to meet up with people before the dalinar end. could get them there because dalinar is able to um create perpendicularities and yeah. he was relatively close to where they were in into the car. physical the shades mar so like he 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 could get them there they can't travel all the way back like they did to get there but yeah th- there is a way for it to work i think um but yeah how did dalinar get back to your Athera at the end to talk with navani then didn't he just travel to the nearest of gate and go through there oh i guess the azimir yeah. gate i guess yeah yeah sure 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 so he he's no longer like there he's no longer into car at the oh, end of yeah, the book. That's true. Yeah. So but, he can, so like, unless he knows, he can actually go and pick them back up. Yeah. So it's like, I think that would eat up enough time that, like, it's not narratively satisfying. It's like, okay, like four days goes by for travel. Now you have six days to deal with everything. I'm like, mm. didn't it take them like a few weeks to get from Durifir to, uh, to lasting integrity? It took several months. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. even, even that. So yeah, they don't. Unless, unless someone lets Dalinar know to go and pick them up from Tukar, they basically don't have the time to rejoin the Eurifer plot. It's Theon now that's connected what? to Hoyd. That's that's mm. true. They they and and Shalon did talk with Hoyd, right? Like they, they, that oh, did, did definitely happen, right? Yeah, I forgot well, about the Theon. Yeah, <laughs> even after that, I talked about the I Theon. don't think there's a reason they need to go back because they can just touch base. Mm-hmm. Like Shalon and Adolin can just be a floating head Sion in whatever meeting needs to happen. Mm. Mm-hmm. They don't need to <laughs> physically get that's true. Make their way back. Yeah. And I am convinced there is going to be some conflict in lasting integrity with those dead eye and like what is going on with the honor mm-hmm. spread that are now like going to bond. I, 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 it's a little unclear. I need some I need some more here. <laughs> What role is Spren suddenly being able to die going to play in that enthusiasm? Yeah, it's not going to be great. I just had this idea idea pop up in my head of like, what if the plot of like Adolin and Shalan in the Stormlight 5 is Halak knows where Balomishram is in prison, so Adolin and Shalan are just leading this caravan of dead eyes towards <sighs> her location. Mm-hmm. I, I like that, but that's not exactly discreet. I feel like the ghost bloods will will figure out where they're going. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I mean, they don't need discretion. They've got a herald, or maybe they they start they start traveling on their own, and then they just discover after like a few maybe like a few days that actually all those dead eyes are just following behind them. That's mm-hmm. actually possible. Yeah, I could. Adeline I could has it. become the Pied Piper of Shadesmar. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pikmin, but with dead eyes. It's like I got all the. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Easy. So long as it's not lemmings with dead eyes, we should be fine. Yeah. Well, you know, they can I mean, be under the beads. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them spend their time there. Great. So. <laughs> Oof. I had a crackpot scenario jump into my mind Perfect. based on something Ian said about like Shalon and Adeline using the the Sion to like just be in meetings now in Aerothero. I'm just imagining like 
the first time this happens that everyone gets set up in the big hall for the meeting and they all walk in and then Hoyd walks in and he's like one moment one more person has to join and like pulls out the seal that no one's ever seen before that <laughs> turns into a head of someone else and my question to you <laughs> is would people freak out or would they just roll with it at this point oh it's just a, a new spread <laughs> Oh, yeah, just call it. A, oh, yeah, it's a spread. I got to talk with the other thing. It's a communication spread. Like, Easy. Yeah, I, mean, I think the biggest challenge would be keeping Navani from trying to dissect the sea to figure out how it works. <laughs> she doesn't dissect spread. She dissects yeah. fabrials. Completely she imprisons spread. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on what kind of what the Seon like. If they have like a hard candy shell. I don't know. Like she, she's an engineer. She's not a biologist. Yeah, that, exactly. It would be a fun scene to see from Navani's perspective. It's just like, what? What? Because she would be like, what is that? What is going on here? Or yeah, I mean, Yasna knows, but it's like, what would her instinct be to think this is a Fabriel or this is a spread? A spread. Like it would 100 yeah. percent look like a spread. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think at this point, like she's learned enough through everything that's happened at air theory to know that most of like the old fabrials were spread and like right. come True. from yeah spread like, powers so as a sibling what is that and the sibling's like oh <laughs> i haven't <laughs> seen one of those this is this this is kind of weird you gotta ask Lloyd, i guess i don't know <laughs> yeah like th there there aren't any mechanical parts involved yeah. so it's like it's a floating ball of light that turns into a head. <laughs> Obviously, it's his friend. <laughs> I'm really excited for Stormlight 5, guys. Um, I, I, we need to stop talking Stormlight stuff so we don't get hyped before uh, I know. it's time. Yeah. Uh, yes, you can hyped for Stormlight 5 now just to go into Lost Metal season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I mean, we have we have enough to be hyped about over the next year before mm -hmm. we even get into Stormlight, because I um, mean, the secret project, man. We ain't it's, seen nothing yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think we hit everything that we wanted to say on, on our outline. We got through it all. And so why don't we get on over to who's that Cosmere character? Character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere Character? Ta. Welcome to Who's That Cosmere Character, the game show where you send five clues and a character to WTCC at 7 I read each clue aloud, and these guys have a chance to guess Who's That Cosmere Character? And we'll solidly get to you probably a year from now i don't know uh there's there's a lot of these so yeah oh no these emails are from july 21 that's not good okay oof well you know we'll we'll get to them eventually if you want to get your who's that cosmic character sooner you can support us on patreon for priority queue where we get to them sooner yeah <laughs> yeah all right this first one is sent in by Redding. Clue one. This character was pierced by metal. In the sister. No, it is not Vin's sister. Is it Vin? It is not Vin. <laughs> Alendi. It is not Alendi. Nice. I like that. It's like the question of like, is this meant to specify Miss Bourne or is this meant to like you're be a hair. red <laughs> and it's not this one. Don't overthink it, Ian. I'm, oh, I'm, I, I have a guy in mind, um, and I'm pretty sure his name is Salen. Like, he's one of the soldiers in Elantris. He gets stabbed with a oh. sword. Uh, he gets pierced by metal. Uh, no, it's not Salen, though. Clue two, this character interacted with main characters both on and off screen. Sadius. It is not Sadius. Sadius. Spook? It's not Spook. Is it Fenderana? It's not Fenderana. <laughs> oh, too 
too soon. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that guess. Okay. Oh, <laughs> kind of glad I was wrong. Yeah, Penrod. It's not Penrod. I like that too. Clue three. This character is involved with secret societies. The Kelsier. It's not Kelsier. <laughs> Get it out of the way. I guess he would have interacted with main characters both on and off screen many times, in fact. All right. This character is pierced by Mel. How about Melon? It's not Melon. Oh, that's good. I like that too. Because Condra count. Oh, yeah. You can pick everything. Yeah. It's like. Oh, okay. This character definitely didn't die from being pierced by metal because he died from poisoning of his own ingestion. Because it's, I'm not, the capsule is who's in my brain. He's not my guest because I don't think he has has (laughs) earrings. Um, Yeah, I don't think Ardens wear earrings. Yeah. I mean, no, you should totally guess capsule. That'd be good. Nah. Secret society. What is a secret society? Um, Miles. A podcast on that. Hundred lives. No, it's not Miles. Clue four. This character is dead. Is it the Farukamis that is like in Stormlight Four, who's like at the prologue and then like is killed by Mraze later? Oh, good old Gary. Lift, like, That's not how you pod. pronounce Gary, yeah. but uh, I, I like calling him Gary. No, it's not him. Oh, okay. I'm so sure. <laughs> <laughs> How would we be pierced by metal? I don't remember how he died. Maybe he was stabbed. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> is it Orasur? No, it is not Orasur. That was a good yeah, guess. Like, did the Lord Ruler interact with anyone off screen? Oh, what the heck? We'll go with the Lord Ruler slash Rashik. It's Why not the not? Lord Ruler. Nope. Um, Edwarn. It's not Pax's Edwarn. Uncle. Nope. Clue five, this character has red hair. It's Chana. No, it is not Chana. Okay. I'm sure there is more than one redhead on in the Cosmere, but my brain keeps defaulting to the one that's still alive. Yeah. Is it Helleran? It is Helleran! Yay! Mm-hmm. Nice! Yeah, he did he did get stabbed. Uh, you you guys really got right to the like i mean they got stabbed then that counts <laughs> like you got to that real quick um well it was like this character is pierced by metal not this character has a hemorrhagic spike yeah that's true mm-hmm. that's true like the connotation is there like we've we have enough experience that we know people are trying to trick us so that's we right. are going that's to right. untrick them that's true yeah, that's true that's good i like that one this next one is sent by evan Riker. Clue one, this character is slash was a mercenary. Oh, this will be fun. We'll start with the low hanging fruit, Denth. It's not Denth. Yep. So long as we're doing low hanging fruit, Tonkfa. It's not Tonkfa. Ham. It's not ham. Vivenna. It's not Vivenna. Clue two. This character could be considered a surgeon slash nurse. Jewels. It's not Jewels. Because she kept stitching in bed together. Yeah. Uh-huh. And- can I clarify, when you say surgeon slash nurse, is that just meant to generally mean, like, medical? Because surgeons and nurses do very different things. Well, so here's the problem. The original clue said surgeon, and then there's a thing in parentheses that uh, says nurse. Uh, and so, uh, so it, I'm having difficulty answering your question. Okay. Which is not helpful, I know. But... They really just should have phrased it as medical professional. But. Well, it kind of sounds like this person, it, it, sort of like Jules, where like she does something that could be considered like medical, but she's yeah. probably not a medical professional. No. Mm. 
Could um, be considered. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have no clue, so I'll just guess Kaladin. Okay, no, it's not Kaladin. Lemix's nurse. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Lemix's nurse, the terrace world like, topper, no. Mm-hmm. Milan? Nope. Clue three. This character does not have any eyebrows. Well, a character jumped to mind, but they're not a Brandon character, so... <laughs> No eyebrows. It's a very specific detail that I, I should remember about the character and yet don't. You know what? I'm gonna... Another suggestion that doesn't quite fit the first clue, but I'm gonna go with Sianat. <laughs> it is not Sianat. Okay, yeah, uh-huh. I mean, what she does to sprint could be considered a medical procedure. <laughs> and she's an unmade, <laughs> so she doesn't really have eyebrows. Uh, sir? I'm gonna pass. Okay. It's like, I I can't think of a character who satisfies, but I love them. It's, I want to guess like some sort of Elantrian. Okay. It's like they lose all their hair. Uh, okay. Like, but I can't think of somebody who is both a mercenary and also does medical stuff in that subset. Okay. So I'm going to pass, actually, because okay. I can't think of anybody. All right. Oh, what's the name of that sleepless guy? <laughs> Which one? I, uh, Which the, one? The, the one we've seen the most of. The one who was talking to Risen. Ar- and- oh, the, the Risen one or the Lift Arclo, one? Arclo, yes. One. Arclo. Ar- Arclo was Lift. Yeah. These are two Nickly was Oh, missing. yeah. Which one do you want? Uh, Nickly. <laughs> it's not Nickly. Nickly. Clue four, this character is... You don't have eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Clue four, this character is a mother. All right. Well. Night wolf. Others who don't have eyebrows. (laughs) That should be a subset. Uh, Is that your guess, Rasar? Yes, night watcher. No, it's not the night watcher. I like that, though. (laughs) Uh... Cultivation. It's not cultivation. Because, I mean, she kind of the surgery Dalinar, and we're pretty sure she You're was a dragon, so no eyebrows. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that dragons don't have eyebrows. I mean, dragons can shapeshift, so. Yeah, but, but they're, she doesn't they're always native. have eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's true. Uh, we are really reaching for it here, kids. <laughs> Others who don't have eyebrows? What? Palm? Lessie? Palm? It, it's not Palm. Um, is it Karate? It is Karate! Yes, it Karate. I... Yes. No. Uh, apparently, she met her husband while serving as a nurse for a group of mercenaries. Two facts that I absolutely had no recollection of whatsoever. Yeah, I uh, have no memory of that. Uh, I knew she was like a soldiery person or like a guard, but yeah. It feel like, feels like some detail that would be buried somewhere in the annotations. Mm, and maybe. if that's the case, then good on you, uh, person who sent this. Yeah. <laughs> what was, what was this clue? Uh, this character is from Cell. <laughs> the eyebrows i'm like who in the cosmere doesn't have eyebrows I, I, honestly <laughs> their their parenthetical was that they're elantrians so they don't have eyebrows i'm like or hair and i'm like is that explicitly mentioned or is that like an implication because i like, think that's an implication i did which find makes a, a lot of sense i mm-hmm. i did find an explicit quote that Elantrians do not have eyebrows uh, in a very explicit quote. So, so I, I was just going to be annoyed. Yeah. So uh, I don't think this is about uh, it, Karata, but it's like, like all Elantrians, he was more corpse than a man. His skin wan and dry, his scalp and eyebrows completely hairless. So there you go. I, I don't have issue with that phrasing, but uh, I, I do have phrasing with the surgeon one. Uh, then like the note was like the mercenaries and nurse. I'm like, but then you're not a surgeon. <laughs> like, like, and nor could you be considered a surgeon. So I, I didn't like that one, but. 
the the hair one does also make sense just from like a physiological aspect Mm -hmm. like if if your body is dead your hair will fall out (laughs) that is how it will work because it is not receiving any nutrients um ai learned if you did just remain stuck there so now we're going to go to our who's that cosmic character priority q you can uh be a herald on Patreon and submit your who's that char- uh, who's that cosmic character priority queue and we will get to them uh faster yes faster it would help if we did a who's that cosmic character shardcast episode to get through some of this queue a bit but uh don't worry we'll have plenty of lost metal content to go through that'll that'll help so this one is sent by Ashes AE uh in clue one this character can read. nice and specific yeah ellen i'll I'll get it's not ellen i'll get the low-hanging fruit out of the way dalinar it's not dalinar susabron it's not susabron teravangian it's not teravangian clue two this character studies nature kwan it is Kwan. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Because he studies the, the nature of trees and yeah. if they have souls. Yeah. Uh, and cl- if they can think. Yep. They can think. Clue three was this character has a tendency to ramble. Right from an epigraph. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh, clue four, this character is not from Rashar. And clue five, this character does not appear on screens. Nice. Cool. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, you can find us on 70char.com for all your news, discussion, theories, and fun that you could want. Uh, you can join us on Discord. There's lots of Lost Metal preview chapters that are happening. And uh, our next episode will be, uh, well, as- assuming there's not a White Sand episode, which probably not. Mm-hmm. But uh, you'll, you'll see Lost Metal stuff after that comes out. And that'll be a fun time. Lots coming your way. Just... We're going to take a little break before the, the content deluge. <laughs> so and we're just take that it. time to watch Diceborn. That's yes! that's true. That's true. Because the Diceborn. Yep. Uh, Behold our role play shenanigans. The Diceborn finale mm-hmm. will be in November. So pretty soon. Yep. Um, yep. So that'll be fun. You can find us on mm-hmm. Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, on YouTube. You can uh, leave a comment below on how you pronounce it. Uh, Adeline or Adeline uh, and it, have fun typing that because I'm sure that won't lead to arguments either really uh, about how you should type things uh, and type pronunciations I want to see at least one person tell us that they pronounce it Adeline <laughs> well now we're going to get a bunch of people saying that uh, for sure mm-hmm. guaranteed and uh, put, put also put in the comments if you want Adeline to be a radiant with Maya. There you go. That's a good one. So we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Happy Halloween. Bye. Bye.